in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. We were reminded of the importance of dwelling in God's presence. You see, adding the picture of that shadow of the Almighty, verse 1 just strongly emphasizes the importance of our nearness with the Lord. Maybe some of you are asking, how do we draw near to God? Well, let me throw back the question to our hearts. Do we always seek His presence? Is He the comfort that we run to when things don't go our way? The message last Sunday puts great emphasis on our intimacy with God. And what we are doing here at church every week, praying together across all satellites in the Philippines and worldwide. It is essential because here we get to draw near Him as one family. Towards the end of Psalm 91, in what seemed to be the summary of all the points that were covered in the previous 13 verses, it closed with an eightfold promise in Psalm 91 verse 14 to 16. Many of us will zero in on the eightfold promises in this section. We want deliverance. We want to be secured. We want God's answer when we call upon Him. We want Him to be in our troubles. We want to be rescued. We want to be honored, satisfied, and taste and experience God's salvation. But we almost always forget that. Ever since the beginning of this psalm, the promises given were conditional. It was for a specific kind of people. People who dwell in the Lord, making Him their ultimate refuge and placing their entire trust in Him and not just on what He can do for them. The word that was used in verse 14 is a beautiful Hebrew word called kashak. It speaks of love, desire, attraction that actually produces attachment. And when you're devoted to Him, there's no better way to express that love than to enjoy your time with Him. We encourage CCFers to read their Bibles and to pray and to carve out space in their days to devote to the Lord. And hearing that message last Sunday gives us a reminder that there's something that we should do in this relationship with God. And that is that we really dedicate to Him specific times of the day so that we can align our hearts to Him and just rest, dwell, abide in His Word, in His promises, in the hope that He gives, being the God that He says He is. And when He says He loved us, He chose us, He made that choice. And there is much love in that choice that was made because we did not deserve to be loved. You have to understand that God is so holy, God is so perfect, God is just so majestic, and we are so out of the line. And yet, even in our lowliness, even in our imperfection, He chose to love us. And that's why when we say we have to be attached to the Lord, we say that because there's a reason for it. And the reason is that He loved us first. At our weakest and ugliest versions, Christ chose to die for us. So when we're told to be attached to God or to cling on to Him, we do this by making Him our ultimate refuge. When there are problems or challenges, He is our first line of defense and also our hiding place. It also means putting our entire trust in Him and not just on what He can do for us. 
He has to be more than enough. We should be satisfied not by what He can do, but by simply being who He says He is. He is God. He is faithful. He is our Father. He is our Redeemer. He is our Restorer. He is a Rewarder. He is all these things and more. And when you think about God that way, there's nothing that can stop you from saying, I want to be in your presence, O God. As David once wrote, in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It means that even if the situations in our lives don't change, for example, my family is still broken. I have dreams that are yet to be called fulfilled dreams. I have needs that I still pray for and, and trust to the Lord. Even with all these things, one thing will never change. And that is that our faithful Lord is our dwelling place. And we are most secured when we remain in His fold, obeying His word and fulfilling His call. We get the benefit of these promises when we learn to trust, when we learn to depend on, when we learn to cling on the God who promised that He will be there when we call upon His name. That is a wonderful benefit and I hope we'll be practicing that message every day as we will be hearing another message from another song this coming Sunday. I hope that your time of prayer and fasting this Friday will be blessed and that you would really align your hearts to Him. Let me close in prayer. Father God in heaven, faithful, loving, kind, true. Lord, we look back at your faithfulness in the past. We remember your faithfulness even today. And we look forward to your faithfulness in the future. And when we think of these things, Lord, we know there is no room for doubt. There is no room for questioning. There is no room for, for, for going back to where we came from. Lord, you are our home. You are our comfort. We pray that you enable our hearts to trust in you to commit to you, to cling on to you. We pray, Father, that you remind us to read your word every day and get our strength, get our fighting spirit, get our dedication, Lord God. Father, we pray for our country. We pray for the current pandemic that's ongoing and the national problems that we have. We pray for your church, O oh God, that as we draw near to you, you will draw near to us as well. We pray for those who are in need, that you respond to their cries and that you satisfy their every need. But ultimately, Lord God, we pray that you teach us to depend on you and cling on to you so that we will walk every day knowing full well that you are with us and if you are with us and for us who can be against us lord we worship you this time in jesus name we pray